They're evil geniuses, deadly assassins, lifesavers, the cleanup crew, and we're really interested in the farts of some. I'm talking about fungi, or fungi, or fungi. Fungi, that's what we're going with, are essential to all land-dwelling life on Earth. And there's still so much that we don't know, which will make sense as you watch this episode. When you think of fungi, you probably think of something that looks like this, or maybe this but it's way more complicated and interesting than that. If you think of mushrooms as veggies on your pizza, you're not alone. Thanks to early classification that threw good old fungi in with the plant friends. In fact, fungi aren't plants or animals. They're in a kingdom all their own, but they're much more closely related to animals. So how do we know? What makes fungi so different? Most fungi spend their time decomposing all kinds of organic matter. When a tree, bear, or any other organism dies, fungi move in and start the work of decomposition. All of this points to one of the main traits that all fungi have in common. From giant multicellular mushrooms to single-celled yeasts, fungi like us are heterotrophs. But instead of consuming their food like we do, Fungi absorb their nutrients from their surroundings. They do this mostly by secreting powerful enzymes that break down complex molecules into smaller organic compounds, which then gets converted into energy to do things like continuing to eat, grow, and reproduce. Unlike plant cell walls, which are made of cellulose, the cell walls of fungi are strengthened by chitin, the same material that is found in the exoskeletons of insects, spiders, and other arthropods. Fungi are also lacking the photosynthesizing chloroplasts that would allow them to make their own food like plants do. Because we're still learning so much about fungi, they are organized and classified in so many different ways. But probably the most useful is organizing them by how they interact with other organisms. We have the decomposers that break down dead stuff, the mutualists that form beneficial relationships with other organisms, especially plants, and then there are the predators and the parasites. Like we said before, decomposer fungi use enzymes to break down and absorb nutrients from non-living organic matter, such as a fallen tree, leaf litter, or that overripe peach in your fruit bowl. Mutualistic fungi are a smaller group. Many of them have specialized hyphae that tangle themselves together with plant roots for the benefit of both organisms. They help plants absorb nutrients by breaking them down more efficiently than the plant roots can. In turn, the hyphae stretch their tissue into the plant's root tissue and withdraw energy-rich sugars. Some fungi get other species to do the work for them. This fungi uses chemical signals to recruit leafcutter ants. The ants work together to form a supply chain that can deliver thousands of leaf fragments an hour to the fungus. In return, it produces little baby-sized mushrooms to feed them, like when your teacher gives you a pizza party for working really hard. Predatory fungi actively capture prey with their hyphae. This fungi uses modified hoops on its filaments to ensnare nematodes like a cowboy and absorb their inner tissue. Then there are the parasites. Fungi like mildews and rust feed on other living organisms without killing them, at least for a little while. Cordyceps infiltrate their insect hosts where their hyphae then grow into the body and absorb nutrients from non-essential organs while controlling their brains. When the fungus is ready to reproduce, it directs its host to march to a cool, moist location in the forest where its spores erupt through its head to spread in the wind. If you're still here liking this video, hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. The mushrooms you see when you're out here on a hike in the forest or playing in the park are only the fruiting bodies of multicellular fungus. Their function is to spread spores, allowing the fungus to establish new colonies. Except for yeasts that grow as single cells, most fungi grow as thread-like filaments through the ground or other organic substrates. This is the main body of the fungus, consisting of those threads called hyphae which grow to form a branching web collectively known as the mycelium. It's easy to think of the mycelium as a type of root 
but they really aren't. They're the main character. The mycelium may continue to grow for years until the environmental conditions are just right for them to produce fruiting bodies. Each fruiting body contains millions of spores. Millions. And if one of them lands in a suitable site, it will germinate and grow to form a new mycelium. Fungi reproduce any way they can, either sexually or asexually. Some species reproduce both ways, but whichever way they choose, most propagate themselves through the use of tons of spores. While fungi can in some cases be extremely dangerous, they're also an invaluable resource. Many antibiotics are derived from fungus. In fact, the first antibiotic, penicillin, was accidentally discovered from a mold, a fungus. Fungi are absolutely essential to a healthy soil and play a key role in trapping carbon dioxide fixed by plants into the soil, preventing its return to the atmosphere. So they're basically superheroes. The next time you see a mushroom as you're just walking along, take a second to think of all the fungi that is living just beneath the surface. And if you want to learn more science, you can check out this video next. Be free. Multiply. A fungus. Got that one.